Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and welcome back to Sleeping Warrior Week. So a few weeks ago I was having a debate with Sleeping Warrior, and I brought up the shadows of Jupiter's moons on Jupiter. And I think it's all known to everyone by now that Anthony Riley is an expert when it comes to eclipses, right? A solar eclipse will happen every single month. See? Absolute genius. So I brought up the fact that on Jupiter you can see shadows from its moons, and Anthony Riley asked, well, why aren't the shadows smaller than the moons? Let me show you. Right. So when it comes to the moon casting a shadow on the Earth in the solar eclipse, why do they tell us that the, um, there's an umbra and a penumbra, and the umbra and the penumbra are significantly smaller than the um, shadow that you're presenting for IO shadow? Shouldn't that also be significantly smaller? So during that debate, I couldn't quite find the right words, but essentially what I was trying to describe was... When you have an object that is smaller than a light source, its shadow will typically form the shape of a cone. And the further away that object is from a light source, the further the cone will extend out from that object. Now when it comes to Earth, Earth is only 150 million kilometers away from the Sun. Whereas Jupiter is actually 778 million kilometers away. And to me, Jupiter being five times the distance from the Sun than Earth is, there would be a significant difference in the sizes of the shadows cast on it by its moons. Okay, well, whatever. So basically what you're saying is that there is a difference in par uh, parallel sunlight from that distance to 93 million miles, right? Definitely. Bullshit. Do you want to do the sums and work out that angular distance? That angular difference? Um, yeah, I, um, just trying to work out what... I'll do it. Okay. There would de but there would definitely be a difference, um, even if it's um, something like... It's going to be negligible, and the same principle will still apply. It was going to be negligible, he said. The same principle would still apply, he said. Do you want to know what the differences he calculated were? Well, I suppose I shouldn't keep you in too much suspense about what the differences he calculated were. But he's the one that's keeping me in suspense because he still hasn't calculated them. At least not to my knowledge. But rather than calculate angles and stuff, I decided to take a different approach. An approach which was more visual. I decided that I would open up Blender and just model the thing. So the first thing that I'd just like to do is preface that all of this is to scale. And I'm going to show you right now. So I can zoom up on the Earth uh, by pressing that button there. So this is the Earth, the Moon is over here, and I can zoom up on that. We've got a few cameras, these are the lines that you see, these are the cameras. All of it's to scale using data that I just pulled from Google. We've got a Sun, which I just press one of these lamps and press that, and all of these lamps are active. These are what I use to cast a shadow, unlike just having a single point light. Because a single point light would not give us the result that we want. It would give us a result which, um, which as the object is closer to the sun, the shadow would be much larger. And that's not how things are in reality. So, 650 point lights to render this thing. We've also got IO here. And... It's connected to Jupiter by this line. And of course we've got Jupiter here. So it's all to scale. And let's see what the result is. So here is our first image of the Earth. And look at that CGI. Oh look at that, it was even spinning for a second. But anyway, in this image the camera is at roughly 1.5 million kilometers away from Earth. And we can clearly see that the moon's shadow is smaller than the moon. So this image here has the camera placed at over 3 million kilometers away from Jupiter. And as you can clearly see, Io is not a whole lot bigger than the shadow. It looks practically like it's the same size. So there you go Riley, simple stuff. As you get further away from your sun, your shadow size increases. Simple, you should have known that already. However, in that debate, Riley should have won that point. Why? The evidence I presented was flawed, but Riley didn't pick up on that. What I should have done is I actually should have gotten a better piece of evidence to support my point. And I'm not going to just tell people why my evidence is flawed. I want the people watching this video to go out and look for my evidence and then come back and type in the comments why my evidence was flawed. So all you have to do is go on Google and search Jupiter 3 Moon Eclipse on Google Images. You'll find it. But I do want to iterate that just because my evidence in that debate was bad 
doesn't mean that there is no evidence. Here's some here. So for the people thinking, well, this video was just pointless then, wasn't it? I think that even if I had provided good evidence, Riley would still be asking the same question. So I'd have still made this video anyway. But anyway, leave a like and subscribe if you like that video. Leave a comment letting me know why you think the image that I presented in the debate with Riley was not a good image. I'm going to be having a very mysterious video coming out tomorrow, but that's not related to Sleeping Warrior Week. But you know, I feel like it will be very entertaining anyway. So I feel like it would be a good idea for you guys to watch it. And hold up, what's this? And if you want to go against the scientific method, plan a walk, talking to you, then you become the public enemy number one. Fuck. Riley's saying that I'm against the scientific method, and that makes me public enemy number one. Fuck this, I'm out.